Welcome, guys, to the MMOs.com podcast, episode 137 here. Uh, Altai, joined this week by a special guest. Let's go down the line. Gumball. Mm-hmm. There it is. And? Omer. And I just want to say I'm really happy to be here this week and I'm ready for a great podcast here on CD101MMOs.com. And I want you guys just to go ahead and just take it away today. All right. I think we got, we, we got to move to radio. We got to get a radio show going, a nationally syndicated radio show. With uh, MMOs and conspiracies. That's our that's our. <laughs> I'm down for the conspiracies. We'll get, we'll get Alex Jones in. We'll get everybody in. It should be fun. We got, we got to sell supplements. It makes it better at games. Love, you want to level faster? Dude, right. dude, that's actually a real product. I think we might have talked about it like a, many podcasts ago, but I got an email from a sponsorship, and they were saying that they were selling these like brain pills, right? And they were they were they were pitching them as like they're going to improve your your your, your reflexes in Counter Strike, in, in League of Legends, and like it, like proven to do all this shit like, it's obviously nonsense but like they offer like a couple hundred dollars a video i'm like no no i'm like give me like three thousand dollars and i'll talk about it because it was shit and like <laughs> i, I could have squeezed it in maybe for like three thousand dollars and i would have said it was sponsored nonsense but i don't know it was weird oh, there you go all right well all right. something much more important this week i have a i have a good weekly raid question for both of you mm-hmm. and for the chat and uh this week i came up with uh do you care about world of warcraft very direct question. Yes. So I know Gumble. I already know your answer, but I want to hear. I want to hear your thoughts first. Okay. Do you, do you as care a, about, like as a person? Not really. Okay. Personally, not really. However, I care about it from more of an industry perspective. Where like I follow the health of the game, and I want to see like how many people are still playing the game because it kind of, it is kind of a barometer for kind of like where MMORPGs are because it still is the biggest MMORPG in the world. Uh, that, no, well, biggest subscription MMORPG in the world, and one of the biggest highest rating, one of the highest rating generating uh, MMORPGs in the world. DFO I think still makes more money. But it's it's been around a long time, so where it is and where it's going, what they what, what they add to the game, it, it often becomes like an indicator of what they expect in other MMORPGs. They kind of lead the way in, in many regards. So, in, in, as an industry watcher, I care, but I I, 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 am, I am done with World of Warcraft. I had the most fun in vanilla. I came back during Mist and I played to late game content, and after, I, I don't even like it. I went through the motions just because like I wanted to see what WoW was all about. And since Mist of Pandaria, I haven't touched it. And even then, it was very short, like one and a half months I played. All right, fair enough. Gumble, do you care about WoW? Yeah, I care about WoW in the sense that I care about vanilla. So I don't care about the new WoW. I don't care about the expansions. But from a so since this question's so open ended, I can take whatever I want. Mm-hmm. The fact I can't deny the fact that for some reason I always go back to vanilla, and it's the only thing that always grabs my interest. So I'm on I'm on another private server. I know. A couple months back, I was playing Nostalrius, and I got pretty far. And now I'm back on another private server, and I'm having fun. I'm still having fun. So for me, vanilla, for me, the thing, what makes it, why I care is that vanilla sets the standard for having fun in in an MMORPG with my friends. My Mm -hmm. friends, the people I know will always go back to it, too. And so, um, yeah, I care. I think... I think I can't help but always compare my experience in WoW to any other game I play. And I think there's a few games I do that with. And for this genre, it's still WoW. I think every now and then EVE Online forms that foundation. But since EVE is such an outlier, mm-hmm. it's really hard to draw those comparisons. But yeah, I can't, I can't help it. I have to care. And when Blizzard, if Blizzard launches Classic successfully, I will be there. Wow. I'm curious, what is it about Classic WoW that keeps you coming back? Because I know you're playing uh, a current private server, which is like, it has some unique elements. But like, what about Classic WoW? is like the the gold standard for you that keeps well, I actually, drawing you in. When I played Nostalrius, I wrote two articles of trying to figure that out. Because <laughs> I think it's I don't think it's an easy question to answer. And um, I'm not going to look them up because I'm holding my mic button down. But I <laughs> guess if I had to give uh, one answer, um, it's the sense of an expansive world. And I think that's very important. We've talked about this before. I mean, I don't know how often you guys talk about it, but... Uh, I always can commend a game for the sense of expansiveness, the sense of mystery. And WoW's mm-hmm. always had that. Uh, every time I play, I mean, I know almost everything about Vanilla's world, but there are still things as you're coming across a, a ridge or something, you're going up a hill, and you see trees on this side, a mountain over there, and you see the woods, and you can go into the woods, and maybe you'll find a cave or whatnot. And there's just, everything feels so big, and your character feels so small. And a lot of games, like, okay, so... We were watching an Ashes of Creation trailer just before the podcast started, 
And I can now, I guess, critique what I didn't like about it. And one aspect is just that your character in the trailer, and this may not be true for the whole game, felt very big to me as I watched it. And this is, I don't know if this is something I can really describe. It's a feeling maybe. I want, in a game with a big world, I want to feel small. I want to feel not insignificant, but small enough that I recognize that I'm just one piece among others. Whereas in a lot of other games, I feel like I'm the hero, I'm the big, the big boss, and everyone else is also a big boss. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? I, I, I definitely relate with your expansiveness. Because I'm thinking about World of Warcraft again, and one thing that really did make the world feel expansive, because you can't teleport in World of Warcraft, right? You had to fly between big cities and stuff. Yeah. And I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV lately, especially this last week with the new raid content. And I noticed, like, the world... It's a big world. There's a lot of stuff in the world, right? But it feels very small because you can teleport to all the major cities, to all the major, like, you can teleport anywhere in the game world, basically, because if, you if, you're, if you're attuned to the Aether right there, you can teleport there. And that really does kind of make the world feel smaller. And there's no sense of, like, adventure or moving between places because I'm, I'm, I'm usually between, like, three or four different places and I can move there instantly. And I do really lose uh, focus on this is an MRPG, you know? Like, I'm not running somewhere. Even if you take the amount in World of Warcraft, like, you still see the landscapes yes. as you go by. And I think it's really beautifully done, actually. You, you really do lose that in modern MRPGs. Uh, thankfully, Black Desert has this, you know, no instant... There's no teleporting in Black Desert still. So that's, that's a nice touch in BDO. At least, maybe that's one of the reasons it's popular today. Well, one of the reasons. I, I want to give one more element, and mm -hmm. this is the most important one. And I can bring this up based on what I said. It's, it is, it's the socialization. Um, I'm playing a open-world PvP server right now, where when you die... You lose all. You lose some of your loot, so it's kind of. I guess it's hardcore. And there's also it's custom built, so you have all the talents and skills to pick. Now, every time I get ganked or someone ganks me, I end up talking to them. Uh, or every time I pass someone by, I wave at them or I see someone near me questing. I end up talking to them. Either they talk to me or I talk to them. And I don't know if that has to do more with the type of person who's drawn to this experience and how old they are, or it's the experience itself that catalyzes that. But uh, for some reason. In vanilla, every time I go back, it's always the most social experience I have where I end up meeting people and talking to them and maybe we just trade a sentence or two or we talk some shit. But that always happens in that game. And I don't get that anywhere else because in a lot of other games, I'm too easily able to do things independently. Yeah. That's what New WoW uh, took away from me, uh, the later expansions. So because there's a challenge and I'm forced to group up with people and because I, I rely on other people to get things done and it forces that communication, I'm always talking. There's an interesting question there. Is it the game or is it the person playing it? I don't know. No, I think it's um, the game. It has to be the game. Because what you just said actually just opened my eyes to a degree with my experience from Final Fantasy XIV. From level 1 to 70, uh, easily for the longest time I played this game, I never talked to anybody. I did all my quests. I did my daily roulette. I did my main story quests. Not once I interact with other human humans in the game. I, I would do like part, the uh, dungeons with them with the auto queue system, but nobody would ever talk. Everyone's dead silent, right? But now that I'm max level, and now that I'm, I'm taking on the challenging raids, you know, you, you you basically find parties in the party finder, and while you're filling up, you, you shoot the shit with the friends and with people in there. You talk to them, and some of them I add on Discord later. Like, I, I've made friends raiding in uh in, in pugging and raiding in the world in uh in Final Fantasy 14, and I never even, I never spoke to anybody in that game until I got the max level and started doing raids. So why is it that games have taken us that social experience, which I think is, is some of the most fun parts of playing an MRPG? They, they basically took it away from the leveling process and they shoved it at the end, which not everybody makes it to the end. It just seems so bizarre because that's like, I would say some of the most fun I've had in, in Final Fantasy XIV is talking to people, making friends and doing shit together and accomplishing shit with people. Okay. What you guys said, I think is actually, I agree, I agree with all of it. But what I find interesting is every, we seem to all be in agreement. And from what I can tell from chat, they, they also agree. The, why is it then that not just MMOs, but literally every genre of gaming is kind of going in the opposite direction? So I'll give you two examples. I've been playing Witcher uh, recently. And, you know, one of the selling points of all these RPGs recently is the big open world. You can, like, all do mm -hmm. all the side stuff, right? But in Witcher, there's an auto path to your next quest objective, right? Like a line, like a dashed yeah. line. So what I find myself doing is I'm staring at the right top right corner of my map where the mini-map is, right? From mm -hmm. objective to objective. I'm ignoring the, the actual world because of this. And even in mobile games, I tried uh, Fake Grand Order this week. It's it's basically so easy, okay, that you don't, you don't have to actually learn things. You don't have to appreciate the world, the art, the characters. You're just clicking next, 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 click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. So you have no investment. And I think ultimately that's what it comes down to. You have to be invested in the game. And no games today, like most games, I should say, you, you don't, there's no need to invest in the game to, to progress. There can be like think of like a, let's say in World of Warcraft let's say like 
let's say Final Fantasy XIV World of Warcraft, uh, they add something to the leveling process, like between one to or like at level twenty, there's like a level twenty rate, right? Mm-hmm. You can only do it when you when you when you when you go to challenge it, it sinks you all your gear to that level twenty, and it's very yeah. challenging, right? Yeah, 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 okay. And if they add it at level twenty, so it's not max level at a low level raid, and by doing that's the only way to get maybe let's say one of the mounts in the game, right? And it's actually really hard. You have to maybe practice for like five six hours of doing your rotations, dodging mechanics. If they put that experience early on. I think actually it would make the leveling process a lot more fun, and it'd be optional because you can get the casuals who want to basically close their eyes and, and AFK through all the content. They don't have to do that. Make it optional. Uh, some optional difficult bosses like that throughout the leveling process, I think would, I, would I really make, fix a lot of problems. I wouldn't make it optional. I, I, here's my here's our Altai's theory. Okay, if you don't die in the first hour of an MMO, just uninstall it. It's a bad game. So for example, That's not bad. Yeah. I remember spending hours, days trying to clear dead mines. I remember dead mines. I just spent an hour. And yeah, then it's all the time, the first hour of the game. What, whatever. Yeah. Okay. But the first <laughs> challenge in the game should kill you. If you don't die, because dying means you have to evaluate the strategy. You have to figure out, okay, I remember I got so far in like some of these games like Bless and stuff without even having no clue what my abilities were doing. I was going one, two, three, one, two, th- like this one, and I, and I read them, right? It's like, uh, uh, applies a debuff to the target. It didn't matter. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's it. Mm-hmm. You couldn't do that in uh in vanilla WoW. You had to know what your abilities. Did. You had to do an order, you know, like in a certain order. Yeah. So, unfortunately, and, and death know, is actually mega mega important. It, it, it kind of t- you know without death, there's no meaning for your skill and power in the game. Like mm-hmm. I I don't care. I never care about my character getting stronger. Gear didn't matter for me in Final Fantasy fourteen. I got the max level with like level forty gear on because it didn't matter. I was basically one shotting everything and not dying. When I put on my level seventy gear, I'm like it was sixty at the time. I'm like whoa, my damage went through the roof. Like it didn't matter. Like it kind of makes you lose perspective on your own character growth, and your customization, and your skill growth. It, it, none of that matters when you don't die. Yeah. You okay. asked originally uh, why it is that games are going in the opposite direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to announce um, a law of the internet. It's called Gumbel's Law. And uh, <laughs> Gumbel's Law states that anytime a community grows too big, it turns to shit. The MMORPG community got too big, and it turned to shit. But it's not fair, because well, Vanilla I was huge. Yeah, it was. It was you. Okay, so and what is, your, is Gumball's Law? I think. When, uh, I think well, I, I remember there was a vanilla, um, vanilla, vanilla. Uh, developers on from Blizzard talked about this, and I don't have a link to it, so you can say I'm lying or something if you don't believe me. But I remember uh, one of the problems they stated was that they had so much feedback from the community because so many people were voicing their opinions, and they tried listening to it all, mm-hmm. and implementing it all. And you know, anytime you. Anytime you start catering to a large group of people with diverse opinions, you end up with sludge. It's like taking all the ingredients in the kitchen and throwing it into the pot. Mm-hmm. Uh, what makes things great, I think, and what makes certain, whether it's art or a game or a movie, what makes it great is typically when the person behind it and the team developing it has a vision and they stick to it and they don't allow outside influences to come in and take it. And I think what happens to things, given enough time, a franchise maybe, is um, you have a lot of other people who look at it for more than what it is, whether it's be to make money or to serve a community that wants things a certain way, and that's when it loses that original vision of itself. And I think that's I think that's what happened with each expansion is there was a catering to a to a like okay, take a mobile game. The mobile industry isn't motivated by creating great games, and I think that's a fair thing to say. It's motivated by a way to turn a profit. Nothing wrong with that, but it ends up you end up with certain design elements which show up over and over and over again. Because the intention isn't to make a great game, the intention is something else. Uh, and I think that's what happens to a lot of these games, is the intention changes. Like, so Vanilla wasn't developed originally to cater to everybody, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. The largest possible audience, but I think now these it games is. are. They're catered, they're developed because they have investors, and the investors want to turn a profit, and yada, yada, yada. So you cater to the largest possible population you can. And that ends up with game elements that don't, game elements that don't, that don't, um, attract someone like me or maybe us who played these so, games originally that's a good point and i uh, i watched a jim position video where he says something along the lines of uh he talks about mobile games and he says uh do, they're not the people making the game are not making it for themselves whereas no. whereas the vanilla wow was uh all the all the development team they were everquest players active everquest players mm-hmm. like raiders in everquest and they basically they were working on a game that they would want to play like everquest but but you know the way they want it and that's why it was so good but now the people working on WoW are probably just like, oh, how many schmucks can we get to resubscribe for like the first <laughs> month, right? That is, it's not, it's not for them. Like it's, it's just you know, right? Yeah. So uh, th- that's that's part of it, I think. Yeah, but there's no reason these games these games can't be more inclusive. Like I said, because I think Final Fantasy fourteen and World of Warcraft do have high end content which would appeal to us. I think even modern WoW, uh, Gumby, if you got the end game like, and yeah. you're doing the rage with friends, I think you have a lot of fun doing it. But I the thing is, you have to get through all the bullshit. 
Okay, but that's the thing is, um, I don't. When I go to play a game like vanilla, I don't consider any aspect of my experience bullshit. So I don't think that's a fair excuse because when I play a it's great not a fair game, excuse. you're right. When I play a game that I really like, there may be frustrating elements in that game, but I accept those frustrating elements because it still adds to the overall experience. It doesn't mean that, like, there's still maybe there's some bullshit. Like, like you know, how in Battletoads, there's that level, there's that bullshit level where you're on the jet skis and you have to mm -hmm. dodge the walls back and forth. You know, that level's bullshit, but you put up with it or you break your controller because, you know, Battletoads overall is still fun. Or maybe it's not, you know, it depends <laughs> on who you are. It, it depends on if you're a masochist or not, but... Uh, you know, so I don't I don't think that's a fair... Now, Final Fantasy XIV for Nightmare also did it right, but it was also a fun... Pa and Final Fantasy XIV also had some BS in it, but it a lot added of BS. To, over, to the overall experience. But, you know... Say la vie, right, boys? It's... it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay, for me, it goes beyond um, MMOs here. Challenge. How important is challenge in a video game? Well, it's something we've lost. I mean, clearly, to us, it's important, but there's a reason games have gotten not challenging. It's because the majority of people want that, you know? that That's what, you know, the market is, they're there to make money, and the most people are playing games that are not challenging. And MMORPGs have fallen the same way, whether it's WoW. WoW has gotten easier, Dark Age of has gotten easier, Maple Story has gotten easier. Like so many of these, the stuff that we talked about with the, with the massiveness too has, has really lost its way. Maple Story used to have um, these these uh, you had to wait in the Orbis station for like thirty minutes for a plane to come. You go on the plane and the plane's like a fifteen minute ride to Orbis. And that pro when you were on that ride, like you were you you couldn't do anything else. You were just like, kind of talking to whoever was on the boat with you, and you would shoot the shit with random people for like fifteen minutes or go AFK or whack off whatever you want to do, you know. But like that forced interaction was kind of cool. But clearly, maybe they they. They realized that most people didn't want that. Maybe, maybe we're just a minority. I mean, we must be. I mean, I, I'm not saying we must be the minority. You are because it appeals to everyone. If, if mm -hmm. when you include everyone, of course you're a minority. Mm -hmm. It's so sad. But okay, here's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to be open-minded. Okay, so I played uh, Fake Grand Order, right? And a lot of yeah. Japanese games on the phone. Here's how they work. So you have a you have a party, right? Like RP, say RPG, like a turn-based RPG. You have a party of characters, like level one, and then you have the option uh, to add. A random third character to your party right for that for that quest and that random third party is like a random player from like the world and they're often level and for my example they were level 100 so i'm fighting a level one skeleton like two level one skeletons with like two level one characters and then my third character is a level 100 character so i one shot everything yeah there's no, no that's, not a, that's not a player to you what do you mean it's not a player yeah yeah in in a certain did the uh stream just error for you guys or just me Stream? Oh, let me check. No, it's going for me. Okay, okay well, whatever. So, uh, that person who joins your party, yeah, mm -hmm. that's not a that's not a player. That's effectively an NPC. It is an yeah, NPC. I'm, NPC. I'm I'm commenting on the the challenge aspect here. So, with that, because I, of that level 100 character NPC on my team, I can't lose. It's nobody can lose. There's no way to lose. Like you could just go. Like you could yeah. just okay. Who 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 enjoys that? Like. Who, I I don't know who clearly the uh, clearly enough to make a billion dollars a year. People are playing it. But maybe uh, I, I think this fundamentally goes back down to the question for us at least that for us and a lot of hardcore MRPG players these games aren't fun until like late game a and it's because what we're looking for in a game is a challenge and the challenge for whether it's Star Wars Lord Republic whether it's World of Warcraft whether it's Final Fantasy 14 does not exist until you're already 20-30 hours into the game it's not there it's impossible you can't you can look for it you're not going to find it it's only there in the end game which is why it becomes like a meme where like MRPG is only fun when you get to the end yeah, but uh, oh, I see what you're saying, and I think the entire experience has to be yeah challenging and fun. And I think uh, so. I'm on a private server, and what makes it challenging and fun isn't the is not combat itself, the quest, because I already know all that. It's the fact that anybody can kill me at almost any time, and I can mm -hmm. lose some of my gear. And that high risk, high reward kind of setting, yeah. similar to that you can even online, is what adds that extra edge that makes you invested in the experience and makes you constantly paranoid and looking around you. And it's pretty cool. And I, I like I like that. And the server you're playing on, actually, I remember in a previous podcast, this this was my idea. World of Warcraft with full loot. And that's the server you're playing on. There's, there's yeah, a, there's this, right. uh, private server called Ascension for WoW. And basically, after level 20, if you die, you drop all your loot no, in the game. Not all of it, you drop some of it. You drop, it's like random, piece. yeah. You drop random pieces of gear, right? So it makes it so, you know, death is always a very scary thing in the game. And you can go PK people and take their shit. You know, it's an open world loot style World of Warcraft, and I had that idea. I feel like years ago, and I feel like it, it copied, it's doing really right? well. They got me. They copied it. Obviously, yeah. I would. Say, I will say it's not exactly. Um, um, it's not perfect. 
Mm -hmm. Of course, and I and I guarantee at some point, if I you know continue playing, I'm going to find some um, flaws in the system and get bored with it. But you know what? The fact that it's kept me engaged this long already says something about it. And uh, I would you know I'd like to see more. I I I wonder. All right, so my question is this, and maybe we can end on this and transition is just maybe the right weekly rate is this: is will I ever stop caring about World of Warcraft as mm -hmm. my gold standard? And something tells me. I won't. And maybe that's nostalgia and because of the era I grew up in, but for some reason, it's not even my first MMO, but for some reason it just kind of defines and casts a shadow over my entire experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I'm not alone. No, no, you're not. And, but, and it ultimately comes to, I also tried that WoW server and when I loaded it up, I haven't played WoW in years, right? What mm -hmm. shocked me was how it was basically the same as any, every game I've been playing recently. So if you played WoW, there's really no no reason to play any of the big new MMORPGs. Because there's literally nothing different about them. They're just WoW, but worse. It's, it, they're, no, no, they're, they're reskin. Not necessarily. I, I, Final Fantasy XIV is basically the same WoW. Ah, but it sounds like a slippery slope. I would, argue, I would argue. This Omar, sounds like a fist of cuffs. I would argue, Omar. If you went through the... So, Omar, you got, to, you got to max level in Final Fantasy, right? Because yeah. your friends were you know, talking. And, yeah. If Had you put the same investment in WoW today, right? And got to the... I invested in WoW with Mr. Pandaria, and I, I got the max level, and I raided I did the mythical one. Okay. If you did the mythical raids, I think you would have had more fun than you're having with this. Wait, hold on, hold on. Here's a comparison, though. I, I, I love the world of Final Fantasy XIV more than the world of Azeroth. The the dynamic weather, the, the, the head tracking, the character animations, the attention to detail in Final Fantasy XIV is just better. Now, are you? I'm, I'm going to concede that the, the raids in World of Warcraft, a mythic tier, are probably better designed and better. Yeah, yeah. But, but the, I'm, I'm saying it, it is a more visually impressive, more there's more like uh, cosmetic stuff, amazing uh, cu customization with aesthetics. And in fact, I think one of, the, one of the weakest parts about World of Warcraft is just how little um, variance there are. You go to character creation, it's so we can make make a character unique. And I think MMORPG is all about uniqueness and you know being your own thing. You know the fashion game in Guild Wars too. Like these are the things that people love. And I think WoW is actually one of their weakest aspects. You know, there's, there's so much more you can do with your character and appearance-wise and housing in Final Fantasy XIV. And I, I've long said that the combat is not the most important part of it. I, I'm playing, I'm raiding right now in Final Fantasy XIV and I'm enjoying it. But it's the whole, it's the war, you know, it's the the customization, my making my character look cute and everything. The whole process is is the game, not just the combat. So I, I don't go. think I would enjoy World of Warcraft the same. I mean, I've enjoyed WoW, it's a great game. But I, when I came back with Miss, I, I don't know, I, I didn't really like it. Wow, Mog destroys FF Glam. Boom. There you go. Well, um, Transmog. I don't know. I like the I like the Glam system in right, 14. Right, well, sure, we could yell about our opinions for you know the next six hours, yeah. but we got we got some like, to cover. All right. You know, I got I got, I got one thing to sneak in there. All right. Uh oh. We're gonna you want you want to talk about some Glams in uh, Final Fantasy 14? I think go ahead and show some uh show some of this. I'm gonna show you the you gotta post some podcast. Top glam right. I'm going to. Let's put this on here. Past year, all right. We're gonna do some some of the some random glams in uh, Final Fantasy XIV. All right, can you do this in uh in World of Warcraft? Can you be a green Power Ranger in World of Warcraft? No, you can't. All right, immersion, game set and match. Immersion broken. Ultra Look at just 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 scroll through some of these. Like it's amazing what you can do. Like the you, you I've seen people look like so many random anime characters, just just their own unique stuff too. And it just there's so much you can do with the glams. There's just there's so many options. I think it looks great. I've seen like Legend of Korra characters. I've seen there's so much amazing stuff you can do in Final Fantasy XIV. Those little and it's just one aspect of the game, obviously. But I think they do that part really well. You know, I think another weekly rate. You know, I never liked this aspect of the games. I'm one of the few I guess yes, that don't I'm like the you. custom I'm aspect. I love it, I'm and I have. You. I think I have a good reason for it. I don't know if we want to go down this rabbit what, hole. What's your good reason? My reason is this: is that to me. The game's purpose is to look cool, but I want to have to have worked really hard to look cool. So when I see someone that does look cool, I go, man, that guy is cool, right? Instead of just somebody who figured out, you know, what colors match and how to make something fashionable. Mm -hmm. Like I want, I like see, seeing other people's gear is for me a determination of how good of a player they are or how committed they are. So when, when you take that away, it's, it removes something from the experience for me, which is that I'm never going to have that perfect set. I'm never going to have that tier one set or whatever. Um, it's a mark of... I like to use it as a mark of skill almost. Even No, if, no, you're right. You're right. But uh, no. In Final Fantasy XIV, you still have that to a degree. But there aren't like... 
there's not many there's not much armor in the game that if you see somebody wearing you, you get impressed by because most of the armor and stuff is really just there for the glamour however the weapon sure. for example your, your weapons and your mounts and your your uh your minions are in the game are kind of like your 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 status symbol i was actually raiding after the surgery set last night and i saw somebody in my party who was carrying uh like this golden uh like samurai sword and that means he defeated ultimate coil which is like so few people have already done it you know it took mm -hmm. like I think two or three weeks since it launched for anyone to clear, and people were doing it all day. And this guy at a party, it means he's done it, you know? And that, that was his big dick weapon, and he swings it around, and I'm like, damn, this guy's a badass, you know? So it still has that to the degree, but you don't see it like you do in World of Warcraft with the with like the pauldrons and the, the whole set. Oh, I yeah, miss, I miss the pauldrons, boys. <laughs> the, pauldron, the pauldrons are the giveaway, you know? To me, pauldrons are always more impressive than a weapon. <laughs> Bigger like, your pauldrons, the bigger your dick. All right. Look at this. Yeah, look at this. Minus like this. This is Elsa from. Uh, you, you, you can have Elsa in Final Fantasy XIV. All right, right, I'm done. All right, you can. But the point is, you, you don't have to do this, but there's so much you can do with it, and I, and, and I love it. You, you got you got uh, you know, Type B in there too. There's there's so much you can do in 14, and I, I love that aspect of it. That's one of many aspects of the game I like, along with the housing. All right, fair enough. All right, boys, clue me into the MMO universe. Now, before we, did, I, I, I want to take us to a mini controversy. Uh, oh, oh, right, that's controversy good. Controversy that I just ran into, actually. Oh, I did, I, like just now? Just, just yeah, but like during the podcast, I, there's there, there's a, there's a controversy going on. I linked to the RMORPG post. Uh, MMOBite is a is a big YouTube channel. Uh, they cover MMORPG stuff, um, and they put out a video for oh, Ragnarok right. Restart. And in the video, and this came out like two days ago, there's like they they have a three minute advert, like thirty seconds, like a minute into the video. So if you go a minute into the video. And they're basically pimping GVG Mall, some kind of uh, RMT website. Like one minute to the video, there's well, a. There's explain a, what RMT is. Just that's a, yeah, real money. I mean, anyone who plays MRPG knows what RMT is, but I, so. I don't. I don't know what it was. So that's, right, I, people, I know real money transaction, not that or not. Right. Yeah, it's people using real life money to buy in-game goods, right? So they they had an ad for that inside their video, and basically the top comment in the actual video is, uh, "I can't believe they RMT. They killed the RMT genre. They ruined games. You guys are crazy." And look at the dislike ratio on the video. And obviously. Um, our MRPG is kind of upset at them as well. But what I like most, actually, before we get to the controversy, read the top comment in uh, on that thread. I, I just I just saw it during on, the on Reddit. On Reddit, yeah. Hi, I'm Amor from MMO. That's all we ever needed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, boys. <laughs> all right. So, so that's. So what, what do you think? I don't care if they want to. It's just. It's like imagine imagine instead of embedding this ad, they embedded like. An ad for like vitamin, course, yeah. vitamin C or something. Or right? who cares? Like, what? Don't buy it. Like, you know, like they're not saying like go buy it or else we're gonna like stop making videos. They're just saying these guys paid us to make this video. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I have a bit of an unpopular opinion as well. Forget the advertising aside, because first of all, I think everybody knows this RMT bullshit exists in every game. I I don't think. First of all, RMT these real you know paying for advantages in games like they're, they're literally built into games today. Like, literally built in like. In Black Desert Online, you, you can basically buy in-game currency directly from the developer by buying cash shop items and selling them in-game. In, in and in, in um, Blade and Soul, which is a game I really like, by the way, you can literally transfer your NC uh, coins, cash shop currency, to in-game gold. So literally the companies are doing it themselves now. So I, I don't know if the argument saying that RMT ruins, destroys MMORPGs applies today because if the developers are participating in it already, it, it's such a core part of the game nowadays. It's just, it's weird. I also have an interesting, probably unpopular opinion. But we're probably three. We're going to be called the three assholes after this. My, and my unpopular opinion is that I think what's what's funnier isn't the fact that this is a video with RMT. What's funnier is that content creators are held to be the arbiters of where the genre heads. Mm -hmm. Like somehow this video is going to ruin the genre, whereas as far as I can tell, it's the people who. Um, you know, it's not the people in our MMORPG or their influencers mm -hmm. or anybody that's creating content there that steer the genre where it's going. I don't think anybody has that power. It's actually the massive horde of people outside this this little exclusive exclusive club that's led to this. Mm -hmm. So I actually feel bad for them. Uh, maybe they were being honest. I don't know. Maybe they got paid. I don't give a shit. Whatever. But is it really motivating you to go out and spend money? I mean, ultimately for me... It comes. It's 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 the player who's responsible that goes and spends the money on this shit, not not yeah. this person. So, well, I mean, whatever. Don't they don't need hate? If you're literally typing in the comments, I hate you. Bah, 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 you know, you really gotta like I don't know. Go read a book or something. Or go back to playing the game. You know, just ignore them if you don't like it. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. It, it's an ad, dude. I mean, come on. Like, 
you know what's funny too um i'm, I'm sure a lot of people out there don't know this but it's it's, it's gotten a lot harder to make money on youtube or websites yeah. like small websites Definitely. in the past couple of years it's um I mean, there's no other way for these guys to make money. Like YouTube ads, just don't pay the bills. Forget the bills; they don't pay anything. You can't, you can't, even <laughs> get, you can't even get like a cup of coffee if you got like you know 50k subs or whatever on YouTube anymore, unless you're doing these kind of in in video ads, right? Yeah. Uh, so I mean, you know, whatever. They're just trying to trying to keep doing what they like doing, yeah. uh, and they want ads. Well, big deal. But but I understand the frustration, obviously, from the from the sure, from the sure. perspective as well. You know, they see first of all, like they see these people. Spam the shit out of their games, and that alone kind of pisses you. Oh, off, that's really. a different problem, though. That is a different problem. I, think, I, think, I am convinced the developers are are in on that too. They have, sure. they fucking have to be in on. I, it. I called that. I'm telling you, that's, that's that's what it is. Yeah, we had. Well, I, well, before we jump in that that uh, direction, I just want to say that it is important not to conflate multiple issues that exist here. Uh, yeah. One is you know RMT and its effect on the genre. One is content creators and an ad. Mm-hmm. Another is you know like it's very important to lay out your criticisms and not mix them all together. And then you end up getting all like silly with with your beliefs. So yeah. I think you know, as long as we keep these things separate. Yeah, I don't know. That's all I had. Go uh, ahead. I didn't, said, good, I didn't have a good. I didn't have a good ending uh, word. There. Someone said uh, they're bracing us for their own RMT idea. Hey, look, we we're up front. Omar just said. Uh, I think earlier, uh, some company offered us uh, money for ads on a brain pill or something, right? That makes you better at Counter yeah. Strike. Uh, we we don't like you know for such a nonsense product we we just wanted more money our dignity costs more the, the, the crazier the idea the dignity costs more right so <laughs> yeah. if they were willing to pay three thousand dollars for those brain pills to play better Counter Strike hey we would have taken it you know hey they actually offered to send us uh, like along with the like if we accepted their deal they would have given us free like brain pills like but things like I, I don't know I'd be scared to take some brain pills that promise to enhance that my sounds weird. No, I that's weird I wouldn't take them but I I, I, I wouldn't take them either uh, it just seems dangerous it's probably just insane. I mean, look, here's another question I have for the audience, and maybe you too as well. How effective is advertising to you? To me, it's actually anti-effective. Like, if I see an ad yep. for a product, it actually makes me, it makes me question it. Like, like what are the, good, good products don't advertise. Like, Costco doesn't run ads. Mm-hmm. So if you have a good product or a good service or a good company, you don't advertise. The only reason to advertise is if you have a bad product or a bad company or a bad idea. So for me, seeing an ad actually makes things makes me dubious. Like, it makes me question things. It doesn't, it doesn't help. I agree. I actually, for some reason, I fundamentally hate advertisements and it, it causes this ire inside me that I don't fully understand. Where like when I go on someone else's computer and they have YouTube ads, I, I feel I feel true hatred and I immediately install Adblock or Ublock for them. Uh, and I don't know what that is or why that is. But yeah, I, I also feel the same way. If I see an ad for something, I immediately uh, almost, I don't know if distrust it is the right word, but I look mm-hmm. down on it. I lose some of my respect. Yeah, like I don't know, like so. So seeing this person running this RMT it doesn't make me like, oh, okay, well I better go do it now because I saw an ad for it. Like I don't know, I just no, I agree, yeah, for sure. And and with the brain pills thing, like personally, I, the kind of ads that would bother me though is like if they paid you to say something like you see this on radio ads all the time, and this is the kind of like where it becomes like nebulous and maybe unethical for me. Is if if, if if like they gave me these brain pills and they paid me money, and 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 I said something like, oh, I took these brain pills and I'm fucking shredding noobs now oh my god i'm so much better at this game because of these brain pills the moment i associate my endorsement and, and it's obviously lying because they gave me money that's a problem yeah that, that's, However, that's dishonest it was like, that's, 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 that's dishonest that's lying that's, that's lying and dishonest yeah. yes so if you just if you just ran their bullshit ad and you say it's an ad that's not really that unethical and i think most people would not have a problem with that right with those with the pills that make you better at games but people would have a problem with rmt because it's more directly impacts them and it's more of a personal issue because we care about mrpgs but not, very few people would actually care about the, the pill thing because you see that shit all the time on like, uh, like radio and stuff. I have one more controversial opinion. If we have nothing else here about yeah. RMT, mm-hmm. uh, it's not RMT that ruined the genre. It's the players who spent the money. Boom. And uh, unfortunately, the problem is, is what, again, this goes back to our earlier conversation. We make a game for everyone, and everyone's playing it. Uh, guess what? A big percentage of that everyone is going to spend enough money to motivate them to keep doing it. If no one's, it's amazing. It, that is the solution, and you know it. And unfortunately, it's really easy to say. It's like that whole world peace thing. If we all just believe we could get along, we would. Yeah, you would. But guess what? It's not happening. Uh, so that's. I, I really do blame players who spend money. And of course, there's a little bit of game theory involved in there. But uh, and it's like, if Erhan buys a mount and he looks cooler than me, now I got to buy a mount too and look cooler <laughs> than him. But you, you yeah. have a better mount and look even cooler than him. Yeah. These things, it's amazing. These things wouldn't exist if people didn't use them, but for some reason they are um, irresistible. Uh, the thing is that, and developers are getting uh, craftier now. They're designing, they're just annoying you into buying them. 
Like, you don't get enough bag space unless you spend money oh, for yeah. more. <laughs> so you just get annoyed into spending money. I think that's the laziest one. Here's, yeah, maybe not too controversial, but here's my ideal scenario in an MRPG. If, uh, like, RMT in and of itself, I don't see a problem with. However, the problem is the way RMT happens. It's with uh, botting accounts, hacking in the game, exploiting and cheating. That's what, that's what makes RMT a no-no. And that's why maybe, you know, it, it, arguably correct to, you know, to ban people that do it and, you know, be against it. However, if RMT happens in a game honestly, like say say two people play a game and they're both not, neither party is cheating, and one guy says, "Yo, Bill, at lunch, like I'll give you five bucks if you give me that mountain, and get, like hundred gold in World of Warcraft." I'm like, that that's that when nobody's losing in that situation. It's when people are cheating and body and exploiting to get the gold that it fucks up the game's economy. Yeah, that's it, true. It, it doesn't fuck up the economy if it's done in an honest, transparent way, which is why I think the system for WoW where you can, you know, the, the WoW tokens, that's actually a pretty interesting system, I think, and it, and it kind of brings the RMT to an official channel. So when it's done in a, in a more honest, transparent way that benefits players and the developer, I think it's a win-win in that case. It's just the problem with that website and that advertiser is that those guys, those Chinese farmers, they're just exploiting. They're just they're, they're using stolen credit. They're, they're doing all the shady shit in the book, in the world. That's a problem with that ad. They're literally doing like things that are just obviously against the terms of service. And the argument for ruining that RPG probably would apply to those companies. Hmm. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Because you're not just buying gold from a guy who bought it. Even botting is not as bad as what you're saying. The exploiting, the credit card fraud. Yeah. Also, Elrond, just to make an obvious difference here, you're obviously shilling for uh, Azure Creation quite hard this entire stream. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, I specifically did say that the entire time, that if, if you endorse that brain pill and saying that you you know, you know got these amazing results, it's entirely different than what Mr. Uh, Sharif did with with uh, his, his juices when he's scamming for the MLM for Wait, juice. Wait, so can we be very creation. clear so you don't have to deal mm -hmm. with shit? What Omer's saying is he wouldn't endorse the product. You see, yeah. there's a difference between giving a product an endorsement and simply saying, hey, look. And I think, uh, yeah. When you're pushing a pill saying it's got all these miracle uh, properties that can make you lose weight, cure cancer, that, that's obviously different than just running an ad versus you know endorsing a product. Yeah, and I, I think I think a lot of uh, sites and videos are getting more sneaky. Like, I'm on MMOs.com right now, right? You can clearly mm -hmm. tell the stuff on the right and left are ads, yeah. right? Like Vikings, there's an ad right here. You can tell it's like a segregated, separate ad thing. But now imagine if this was an ad. The weekly raid, you care about. Imagine like WoW paid us to write this, right? And it's not labeled anywhere. There's an ad. Yeah. That's sneakier. That's worse, right? Because it's not labeled as an ad. Or so the more you removed, you get uh, the more honest and acceptable. I think. Yeah. Get. As long as we it's an ad. Yeah. Also, like the, the two ads, that Vikings ad on, on the left and right side, we get paid 50. If you click on that ad and you sign up, we get 50% of all the money you spend in that game. I think the game is a piece of shit, right? And I think it's a pay-to-win, nonsensical game because it, it, it is a strategy game where literally the more money you spend, the stronger you are. I think it's the worst kind of game, right? But hey, you know, some people are clicking those ads and spending money in game and we get paid for that. I don't think it's unethical at all putting that ad, you know, because some people are going to spend money. Some people like these kinds of games for whatever reason. You know, God bless their heart. If they're, they're going to spend money, you might as well get the 50% cut off it if they click it through from our ad. I don't think mentioned. it's the same as me. And I'm actually anti endorsing them. I'm saying they're, they're pe I've mentioned numerous times in this podcast that I think the game is awful. I think we're getting sidetracked, but I have to say this. The thing <laughs> with the juice and the whole multi-level marketing is he wasn't even saying the juice tastes great and is good for you. He was saying, buy boxes of this juice for me because then you sell can turn it. around and sell them and then it'll be a business You'll be you. rich. Then you'll get rich yeah. by selling the juice to other suckers, right? It's called preying on people. Yeah, so what he, what, what he was doing wasn't like you know, drink my juice and you'll run better. You know, that could be dishonest, but whatever. Who cares? Everyone says that. He was saying, buy buy crates of my juice from me and then sell it to another sucker yeah. and you'll get rich. That is shady, I think. If you pull up his old website, you, know, you can find that on archive.org and type in the... I forgot. If you, if you Google, do the Google Foo, I found some really damning stuff in there before. But whatever, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to dig that up again. What he's doing right now with uh, with Asher Creation, he's got... We said in the, in the, in the pregame, it looks like there's more progress being made on Asher Creation than Chronicles of Lyria, which is good. And I'm glad he's pouring his, uh, his money into a passion project like uh, Asher Creation. I hope, and I hope it happens. But I just don't think that there's any comparison between uh, selling some pill than, you know, and then endorsing, you know, some bullshit, some scams. Yeah, uh, I, have to, I have to say one other thing, but it's not about this. I just about sneaky advertisements. A couple months ago on the internet, there were ads put underneath like all these popular websites, and they looked like uh, links to other articles on the same site. They tricked me. It was ads. It was ads. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh they got gotcha. you. They got me. My ad blockers didn't block them. That made me really mad. All right, but how about this? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I still, I still say, don't fund any of those crowdfunded games when the game comes out if you like it buy it but I, I i just stay away from crowdfunded games and i recommend everyone do the same simply because you don't know what you're getting it may never yeah. come out 
So that that's all we've been advocating for that's, a long time. That's totally fair, guys. Look, just wait till you can play the game, whether it's yeah. Star Citizen, National Creation, what Chronicles of Illyria. What, Wait till you play it, and if you like it, buy it. That's it. I mean, I don't think that's a very controversial uh, <laughs> position to have. That's very controversial. Give me your money. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta pre, we gotta pre give you the money, and hope, it, and hope you make a game out of it. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, I wanted to know. I come in here to learn about MMOs, and uh, I need some news or something. Give me some hope. Right. Give me some hope. I'll give you some. The, the trick to the podcast when I'm here is to instill a sense of hope. And yearning in me by the end of the podcast, so let's do it. I got I got some China number one news for you. How about that? Oh, I, I love China, China, China number one. one. Let's go and break our Chinese overlords. Right. China number on? one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play some gameplay from of PUBG Mobile, and I, you know what? It, it surprisingly looks okay. These mobile games usually look okay, but when you play them, they're they're nonsense. But the trailers usually look pretty good. Here we go, boys. Can you even like this looks? This looks like a low settings PC version of PUBG, mm -hmm. to me at least. And now it's lagging. Oh, here we go. Better than Xbox. You know what? A few people in the comments were saying that. It actually runs smoother than, than the Xbox version. <laughs> Did that, was that version patch? Because it was embarrassing from what I saw. This actually looks really fucking good. Holy shit. Visually, this looks like... Again, like you said, uh, a medium setting. Forget low. This looks medium setting. <laughs> uh, PUBG, like actual PUBG. What the fuck? Yeah, that's amazing. Thing. They're doing everything. They got it yeah, all. Yeah, seven kills. This guy's a pro. Looks like console version. But uh, yeah, so that's the China number. One. I got a second China number one story uh, for you guys here. Please. This is. Uh, Wait, the were they were they bleeding green? Were they what? Was the green? Was the blood green? Yes, you can't have red blood in China. <laughs> Yeah, that's against the, the communists say only the communist party can use red. It's like it's like the old days with royal purple. Only royal that's purple. the reason why. No, <laughs> <laughs> I almost believed it. <laughs> really? I was like, you know what? It could be that crazy. I I rationalized it. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. No, no, it's because they don't want it to be realistic. Um, okay, so this is a reverse story. Uh, NetEase made a game called Knives Out, which was a PUBG clone for mobile, but now mm. they are bringing that to PC. So oh. PUBG's going this way, and they're going the other way. Actually, Knives, I'm pretty sure Knives Out is the same game as Rules of Survival. Like, Netty, these yeah. Chinese have a very weird approach. They make multiple games. They're basically the same game with different names and see which one sticks. Because Knives Out is very similar to uh, Rules of Survival. Their other called A-B okay. testing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I actually did a first look for this one. The game is not terrible on mobile. It's not terrible, but you know, I'd rather play PUBG on PC. I, I've still, I'm not sold on mobile gaming just yet. Look at this scrub. He ran in a straight line. You never do that. You, you never zigzag. You gotta oh, zigzag. There's a That's drone. a Daisy lesson. You guys see that drone in this video? Whoa. It's coming up. This is actually what the gameplay looks like. Dude, it looks he like blocked this. a bullet with the pan. Did you see that? <laughs> Act <laughs> active, like, blocking. Holy shit. Oh, my god. Are there... I'm curious. In, in our everyday life, has someone put a gun on a drone yet? I know I've seen some mock thing. On YouTube, but I want to see a gun on a drone. Then I know we're in a dystopia. <laughs> you gotta put a, just put a knife on a drone and just fly it around. You know, the only mobile game and RPG I'm, I'm kind of hopeful for is um, I mean, BDO Mobile looked kind of interesting, as did uh, RuneScape Mobile. RuneScape Mobile because it's going to be the same RuneScape game like on PC on mobile. It's going to be cross-platform. It's going to be the same thing that works. And if that does well on mobile and it brings new users to the game. Hopefully, again, it sends a signal to the market that, like, you don't make shitty autoplay games. You make, like, real games, and people embrace it. So I'm hoping for RuneScape Mobile to, like, boost their numbers. Have you have you uh, seen Black Desert Mobile, Gumball? Uh, briefly, It looks maybe? decent, visually. I know uh, Step R put up a video for it, just from the tutorial, like, on, in the beta. All right, so here's some gameplay, apparently. I'm not sure this is actual game. Let's see it. I remember it looked very pretty. I feel like I need a new phone, but I don't know if I'm gonna play this anyway. Let's see, where is it? Uh, you gotta, you gotta watch, you gotta watch the streamer, right? I don't like it. Really? It kind of. No, I don't, I don't, I don't like watching it on the stream. I'm watching it on YouTube. Okay, mm. fair enough. Very pretty. The character creation on the mobile version is actually like it looks just like the PC, almost like just like the PC version. Like it's pretty in depth. Which is See, what's crazy. It's just so many games have such shit character creation on mobile. And these I are the first guys. Good job. 
You notice how in any any of this trailer they don't show you what the interface looks like? The interface always ruins it for me on these games. The uh, mobile show, interface show with the, the big Steparo buttons. One. Just search Black Desert uh, Mobile Steparo and Steparo put up a great video for it. Right, Real see. question, is Steparo or a guy or a girl? Does anyone know that for sure? Is that it says, uh, mystery as old as time. It really is, because I've known Steparo like, since the hut days and even before then. Like, I never knew. You want oh, the chat know for sure? So in this one, you can actually see the UI gumball, so you can't. Yeah, that's why I mentioned this. Here you go. Okay, it's not, it's not insulting. I, I don't know if I could do it though. I mean, at least, at least it looks like you're doing something. Like so many mobile yes. games I've played are, you're not actually doing anything. It's just kind of doing mm -hmm. itself, or I don't know, you're clicking. Next so is this a um, MMORPG, or is it like you enter a stage and no, then this you is persistent. Went to the it's stage. Persistent. You can see the map in the top left. It's actually that's a world map. Which is pretty crazy because you don't really, really see that. And he's playing it. Yeah. She's playing. I don't know. He or she? Zer. 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 That's Zer is crazy. Playing this. It means he just says the guy. I hope it, it can handle a large amount of people on the servers. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, so to me, when I see this, this is open world kind of thing, persistent world. Uh, is this the next step? Is this the step people have been waiting for for these kinds of games? Because aren't most of them so. just hallway, hallway simulators? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. I uh, I think the next paradigm in MMORPGs, you know. After Whoa! Now, he just dropped paradigm, boys. We're getting real. We'll, we'll be no, a mobile game. We'll be a mobile game. I think. Yeah. I, I already I, told you the next paradigm in MMORPGs will be when with more user created content like Roblox. The Roblox model applied to uh, MMORPGs where people, we you know, we we talked about it last week. I'll be like, imagine you log into um like World of Warcraft Live, right? And when you click when you click your server, you see Ascension on there, or you see all the private servers on there, where all the custom rule sets exist. And Blizzard gets like a twenty percent cut from all the revenue. That's never servers. happening. Well, I yeah, but think about if every MMORPG had their own like uh, they gave everyone like s tools to change the rules and shit and yeah, make all this custom shit. That's that's basically information utopia. It's not happening, but I, I'm all for it. That sounds great. You know, there's a Minecraft server with like over twenty five thousand players on it. I think it's, what's it called? What? Hi Hive Lax? Mike? Somebody who plays Minecraft. What's the biggest Minecraft server? Beans of the twenty five thousand. I mean, I know Minecraft world is huge, so you can do it. Yeah. So, and they actually make a lot of money. And I think that, but you know, I don't think I don't think they, uh, Microsoft takes a cut from that, which they probably should. But basically, I was reading an article I think on Rockstar Shotgun. Uh, probably said the name wrong, but um, they make over like two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month from this Minecraft server. Wow, they must and have they, a big they, staff though to handle that. They, they have like they have like twenty five employees. Yeah, where, yeah it's yeah, a real business. Sense. They make over two million. Yeah, High Pixel. Ha said, there you go. I'm, I'm retarded. I couldn't think of the name. But they, you know. That model works really well for Minecraft. So many people play Minecraft on like not vanilla servers. Like the whole user created content and custom content has really created an amazing scene for Minecraft. Roblox has done the same thing, but Roblox is smart enough to centralize it where they take a cut from all the sales Microsoft, and it's all done on one platform. Microsoft is regretting that and working on it. Um, yes, they're going to they're gonna work on that. They have a Windows 10 version, which is the version that is shared between you know the console and mm -hmm. PC now, right? And that version... Mm -hmm. uh, they control it. They control. They control the store. They sell you castles and, and gear or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the Java version, which is like the original one, I feel like they're slowly gonna phase that out. No, but so many people play on the custom server. They so don't you, make any money from it. So yeah, but but, but they, I think they're gonna bring that in the fold because if they can take a cut of the high pixels, like two hundred thousand plus a month revenue, multi million dollars a year revenue, like that becomes an amazing revenue driver for them because so many people play these private servers, whether it's you know Ragnarok Online, whether it's World of Warcraft. And if they can get a, if they can get twenty percent cut from that, it actually I think increased the value proposition for people to subscribe to World of Warcraft. Like, if you can play that on the official launcher, and you have so many more options. You can you can still play the live version. Like, you don't if you're if you're a live player for World of Warcraft, you don't lose anything. You not even option to play on these private servers more legitly on the official server, and you still support Blizzard by doing so because you still they still get your sub. Like, it, it just seems like a win win. And Roblox has proven that this works. Roblox is one of the highest grossing uh, video games in the world. What and I, it's built on I people mean, making their shit. I, I totally. Uh, agree with that. I just think uh, the barn door. That's already, a new paradigm. The, the barn door is already open with Minecraft. So I, they, the only choice they have is to force people into the Windows 10 version, mm -hmm. and then slowly just stop updating the Java version. That sounds like the right path. I mean, the one that's going to happen, not necessarily the right one. Yeah. But... Uh, Terrific Life asks us about Bless. What do you guys think about? It? I mean, we, we enjoyed the version of Bless we did play. I, yeah. I'm hoping it does well. But I mean, I, I, I have no doubt the cash shop is going to give you uh, advantages or mega conveniences. I think the version we even played, there was actually instantly resurrect if you paid money. So like, you could buy these uh, like uh, Ruby things that just bring you back to life, which was uh -huh. kind of lame. But like, well, that, that's so part of the world now. Like, uh, it's not bothering me. Yeah, a lot of games do that now. Yeah. 
I'm almost disappointed that it's coming out because I wrote so many articles trashing Area and whoever about how Bless yeah. wasn't releasing. But it's not releasing oh, through Area. They gave up on Area. Oh, they did. <laughs> yes, they're launching on their own. That's so, probably the right move. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. they realize it's a thing called Steam, and they don't actually need a publisher. They can just put it, on, it Steam. on Steam. Yeah, that's probably the smartest thing they could do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it might be buy to play as well, and I, I wouldn't be surprised they go to buy buy to play route because they've seen how successful BDO has been with that model. Mm. But what's crazy is I feel like with buy to play we always promised like the Guild Wars two system where it's like completely fair. But now buy to play with BDO, yeah, you can play the game and you know you don't have to buy the mount, the the, the pets and shit. But it really does feel like you're still getting nickel and dime. Yeah, you do, like, oh, I feel like B, yeah, BDO, you, you you're definitely and dime getting, so much, definitely, definitely. So it feels like a free to play game that like th- they're getting five bucks out of you on sales. Yep. Like, it's not that much money anyway, but just. I don't know. Because uh, when it was lost, it was twenty. It came on sale really cheap or something. But <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if you go buy to play, you got you got to make sure you basically just doing cosmetics and stuff that doesn't impact the gameplay. I think nobody minds cosmetics, but when you get to convenience, like if you make it too convenient, and you if you play BDO seriously, you need to have the mouse, not, the 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 pet trap. You need them. Yeah. So it becomes like it's not even convenience; it's basically required in the high end. I like bless. I'll probably play just for that Hans Zimmer soundtrack. Yeah, it's true. But my my biggest criticism of Blesto, from what I remember, besides the dungeons we did together, I I kind of played without thinking at all. Yes, exactly. Doesn't necessarily a bad thing, but I definitely did play without putting yes. a thought into it. I just decided to become the machine. But but when we, I remember we died a few times in the dungeon. It became the like a challenge. Were, yeah, it was fun. That I was the fun it. part, you know. We, we did a limited party. Yeah, but that was still awesome. I I loved running through like. Honestly, that that feeling of having difficulty and wiping and trying to learn the boss fights that kind of got me reinvigorated, and that's maybe one of the reasons I committed to Final Fantasy fourteen like like later on that year because I wanted to, I, I wanted that feeling again, you know, of, of challenge and just raiding, and I and I got that with Final Fantasy fourteen for now. Here's how long it's gonna last. But I had a lot of fun with Bless. When's it gonna release? Twenty eighteen. This year? Yep, this year. That's it. They had, they have we... they have it set down as coming soon, twenty eighteen on Steam. Uh mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I think we have a lot of stuff coming out this year. Uh Ascent Infinite Realm is coming out as well. Though they pushed themselves back to uh to I think Q three. Yeah. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. So that's unfortunate, but that's very similar to Blessed, like visually, from what I've seen. I've seen some gameplay videos. Those two are gonna really battle each other. Uh yeah. Come on, I don't know if you saw Air. Uh let me let me just play that one. Mm-hmm. That one trailer, that the laggy trailer that you guys didn't like. At two thousand, nobody minds cosmetics. That was one of the biggest beasts in videos cash. I mean, look, no matter what happens, there's going to be beef, and people are going to complain. No matter what, people are just natural uh, bitchers. All right, everyone likes to bitch about something. But honestly, I I don't see the valid concerns on a free to play games cosmetic cash shop if it's free to play. Oh, I've seen this. I don't mind. This is cacao, isn't it? The they're publishing. Yeah, publishing it. Yeah, published. This is it's by Bluehole actually, the guys who made PUBG. PUBG. They also made Terra. Yeah. When I think of Blue Hole, I don't think of PUBG. I think of Terra. Terra. Blue Hole was just smart enough to bring PUBG underneath them. That was a very smart move for them. It was. They. I wonder how much of their total revenue PUBG takes up. Probably almost all of it. Oh yeah, ninety nine percent or something. Mm-hmm. This game looks interesting. Again, no interface. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I start. That's when my suspicion show. But I don't see the UI because I'm. I really do, and I've said it forever. I hate UIs. I hate UIs. I really hate them. Yeah, the, this game is also going to be Unreal 3. So this is going to be, I think, heads up with Bless. And I don't know which one's going to win, but one of them is going to kill the other. This looks really interesting. I got to say, this looks more interesting to me because at least there's more... Um, it seems like there's more flavor. The whole like cyber uh, steampunk thing. The, the flying thing. It like, looks what neat. Is, like, what is Bless? It's just fantasy, right? Yeah. Okay. The thing about Bless too was kind of weird, and I hope this game uh, kind of addressed that issue. So much of the landscape felt like 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 hallways, even though you could fly over everything if you have a flying mount. But like when you oh, don't have a flying mount, so much of the world just really felt like hallways. It was really structured in a way where like you didn't really have the freedom to go like over the mountain right. or over the hill. You just had to go straight. And oh, it looks like in this video, it looks a little better. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this game. I think this game looks great. Uh see, here's the thing. I, as long as it's not. This isn't just some trailer screwing with me, but it does look a lot like Bless. Oh, the barrels are pretty funny. Look at like this. Bless. This is some mini game shit they got going yeah, on. Yeah, they got cool. mini games. They got like racing mini games. They got it's like grid system for housing and farming. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks good. I'm, I'm excited to give it a try. This is gonna come out in this year. America? Yeah, this year. In the U.S. West, whatever. I don't the know. West what to call this it. year, yes. 
All right, this grinds my gears. When I see like that that otter looking like NPC, you're like, come on. I oh, hate that. What is he I, doing there? All right, Omar is the he, most he's hip- there. Omar's the most hypocritical guy when it comes to these characters. Why? Why? He likes Lala Fells and stuff. They're fucking adorable. Okay, but, and but they don't like otters. otters. He doesn't like otters, and he hated in Skoden Three. There was a duck with a halberd, and he like turned. Yeah, he, it didn't make any sense. Well, so a duck with a halberd Species. does an, an otter don't make sense, but a Lala Fell general yes. makes sense. Yes. Okay. I, I think I prefer the duck. <laughs> no, the level. It doesn't make I sense. Want, why why are they? Ad- why, why can this otter talk? It's just well, weird. Why can Lala Fells fight toe to toe with like these huge giant races? Because, because it's a fantasy and more PG. Well, exactly. It's the same okay, reason that's the same reason. For I the don't like. Talk. Look, I'm not saying it's like not internally consistent because it is. Okay, it's their game world. It, it just seems weird and off putting for me to see like uh like <laughs> wow, animals you know it's funny, talking. I'm point shit. Now you know exactly how I feel. Yeah, <laughs> now you, yeah. Now you know how we feel about Lala Fells. All right. No, look, like, cat girls are fine because they're mostly humanoids. All right. Mm-hmm. What? There you go. If they were just cats and they were it's talking, like that'd be kind of weird. Game, but at, at, least yeah, cats actually, at least cats actually exist somewhere. Sure. So, like, uh, whatever. We'll, 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 we'll carry this later. Cobra. This is really Cobra. Thank you. Thank you, Rastafag. <laughs> I almost, I wasn't going to call it. I was almost sucked up into that one. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, what do you got, Amar? What do you got for us? we got to move on. What else we got? I don't know. Let's see. Whew. What else is going on? Off the cuff, huh? Off the cuff. We don't plan these things out, boys. We don't plan these things out. Uh, Lawbreakers is uh, is still in the process of dying. That's need- nothing new, though. Oh, all right. Well, I, I think we're out of, of uh, topics here. No, we, 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 so we, we got one more. No, we got a big one. We, we, we got a huge one. Uh, Kettle oh. Unchained is actually will be a playable beta on July 4th. Wow, Camelot is, like, Unchained. Yes, it'll be playable. That that's a keyword, like by by like everyone. It'll be play, you can actually play this game. These guys just earned all the respect. They were crowdfunded, right? Yeah. Originally, yeah. all right. These guys just took all the crowdfunding respect that exists. Yeah, and not only that, I'm going to give them even more respect here because they're uh, Mark Jacobs said they're going to change their refund policy, right? Because now that the game is getting closer to release, right? But however, the refund policy. Uh, They'll give like a 20 day head start when they're going to change it. And they said, you'll be able to play the game or you'll be able to play your alpha and be, and be able to refund your money if you want, basically. You still have the option to get a refund during alpha. That's pretty nice of them. So you have a chance of actually playing the game. And if you don't like it, you get a refund. That, that's pretty that's pretty badass. That's pretty legit. And they will change it later to get rid of refunds because now the game is actually moving close to release. But sure. you, they're being very honest and straightforward with it. So I can... Mad, mad respect to Mark Jacobs for that. You mean they're not going to change their terms of service overnight in the quiet of the night like some other companies do? Oh, <laughs> Star Citizen's done Star that like Star 10 yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's something, you know, at least... Uh, I'm curious to how much content there is in this game. So I, I'm actually looking forward to playing the... playing the. This is called the Beta 1. Obviously the first of probably numerous betas. And I'm pretty sure this is like three years worth of delays as well. But it's actually happening, you know? If I remember this right, game, this is yeah. a PvP game, right? Yeah, PvP. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like Crowfall. Well, it seems similar to Crowfall in, in design principle, but again, I, I haven't played Crowfall yet. I've just read up on it. How much is this going to cost? Is it a full price retail game? No subscription, subscription or subscription? Maybe. It's going to be subscription. Wow, I'm impressed. I'll, I'll try it then. If they're put, if someone, a subscription these days is a mark of quality. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's for Actually, sure. I think that was our weekly raid last week. It was something along the lines of our our our, our subscription games to make a comeback because people are so tired of of this like you know shovelware. Sure. Your Pantheon is another good one. I want to try that too. It's like a spiritual successor to EverQuest. Right, right. Interesting. Is 2018 the year of crowdfunding releases? Well, I guess the main marker for that would be if any of those City of Heroes spiritual successors are released, but I won't I won't even hold my breath for that. Alright, here's uh here's some gameplay for this one. Non uh here's the thing. Did, did one of my biggest concerns with the Camelot Chain for the longest time mm-hmm. was that there just wasn't like too much actual gameplay and people have other people haven't really played it yet. We've only seen these like weird uh like videos that Altai showing in the background, like them showing off certain things. And I think there's two guys here playing uh Camelot Unchained. And there's basically nothing here just yet. This is an old video, though. This is an old video. And I'm just curious what you know what we're gonna get a chance to actually play. Well, I saw no. some PvP videos. This is there an was old some video, there, though, yeah. there were some videos where they had a couple hundred people in a field slamming each other. I remember watching. There, there's this one as well. I'll show you. Put this one on too. Yeah, you can see other people uh, running around fighting stuff here. This, this, this is a better video. You get some actual content here. 
Oh, I in guess this video. The, the character creation is pretty interesting. What are mm -hmm. the races? What, what is this little midget dude? All right, I, I, I want to know. Is this, is this character uh, Remo approved? Let me take a look. This I'll race. tell you if he's Remo approved. Is this Riso, Riso, uh, race? Uh, it looks kind of weird, but it's fine. All right. I mean, I'm not going to pick that race. It looks weird. Like, 100% I'm not playing that. I, I know. It looks weird. Let's not forget Shroud the Avatar. True, that game is, uh, I think they made their official launch, or at least a beta launch somewhat recently. Okay, what what I like about Camelot Unchained, and I, I talked about it a few weeks ago, is first, they made a custom engine because they realized Unreal or whatever they were working with didn't work for MMO. It, it couldn't handle a high player count. And uh, the best example of this is actually uh, Camelot, what is it, what's the game called? Conan, Conan Exiles. Remember that game? Mm, Couple, yeah, yeah, you were hosting I ran a server. server. Okay, they promised 64 players per server, which, by the way, 64 is not a lot of players. But anyway. No, and they couldn't do it. It couldn't even do like 30. It was like 24. It kind of started dying. Mm -hmm. That's a joke. So the fact that this game, I paused it here. You can see a lot of people in the background doing shit. Like that, that's a, an MMO needs to be able to handle a lot of players on a single, you know, region. So we'll see uh, how all these games handle this. All right, so Morris, Morris and Hendricks has been very adamant of uh, trying to get our opinion on which games are going to shut down this year. All right, let's talk about games shutting down, yeah. boys. Let's talk we about have, the, the ones on the deathbed. This is, this is a list of games that already shut down this year. Or All right, here we go. So we got Perpetuum Online, Link Realms, Davillion, Paragon, Gigantic. So what will join this list this year? Hmm. I think it's actually more, there must be more than that, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm, missed sure, a couple. I'm sure there's a few others. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I know I put up a few articles on Mo's.com about more Law games. Lawbreakers. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Lawbreakers, I think will shut down this year. All Is right. Battleborn? Does that still exist? Battle. Ooh, I think it does. I, I don't know. I think it does though. But, uh, Battle of the Immortals shut down this year as well, and War of the Immortals. But uh, oh, yeah, neither yeah, yeah. game was apparently Battle immortal enough to survive. Battle of the Immortals, War of the Immortals. All right, there we go. Two more. Marvel Heroes shut down. Was that was that in December though? It might have been December. Uh, yeah, I think that was yeah, late that, last that year. Was, that was late last year. Also, I shut down again, but that was late December as well. Battleborn's going stronger than Lawbreakers. 27. There's no way Rift is going to shut down, guys. Rift just launched a new server uh, with the subscription. Yeah. Interesting, again, with the NT Self titles, I mean, if Aeon was one of the their weaker franchises. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think their Aeon mobile game didn't do very well either. I love this Elrond guy. He's chilling so hard. He's chill so, yeah. He's, all the other ones are shit, and he, <laughs> likes, his, uh, he likes his game. Yeah, I think look, a, a few guys have mentioned Aeon. Aeon is okay. Aeon is declining, right? But it's still making money, and it's it's definitely not going to shut down before Wildstar. So yeah, Wildstar will shut down first, I think. Yeah, but yeah. we missed our bet last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. Wildstar. Big time. You know, I'm going to add Wildstar back on his list. It's going on the list. It's going back on the list. 169 on Steam. APP. Uh, a lot of these mobile games. Uh. Oh, uh, Master X Master shut down this year, by the way. I thought it was last year. What? That was last no, year. No, they announced a shutdown uh, January 31st. It shut down, I believe. That was short lived. I think it was January 31st. So the game rested pepperoni. All right, fine. I'll write it down. I don't think Terra's shutting down at all. They're, they're, Terra's talk about their mobile launch now. So, not the mobile. They're, uh, they, they do have a mobile game coming out and they have a console game coming out. So the there console is version is launching soon. Uh, two players right now. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. And Terra's an oldie now, too. So I don't think Terra is definitely not going to be on that list. Oh, there's some drama between the guys behind Camelot Unchained and Ashes of Creation. That, that, I will look at that, actually. That, that seems like, like pretty fun drama, yeah, actually. I, I love drama like that. I, I have a lot more respect for Mark Jacobs, even though, again, we haven't seen... Uh, no, you know, no one's really played Camelot Unchained yet, either. But I have a lot more respect for him as, like, uh, as, a, as a game designer. He has credibility. A lot of credibility. All right? He made uh, Dark Age of Camelot. He sold it to... Uh, he sold his company Mythic for like $100 million, something crazy. He, he, he has experience, at least. I, I so in that regard, he's got way more credibility, but we'll, we'll see. I love how every Moo Legends will shut down even though it just came out. No way. No way. Yeah, I don't think so yet. Man, I love how everyone likes circling the... We're like sharks, guys. We're like... We're off of blood. <laughs> we're just... <laughs> uh, yeah. Everyone like wants... I don't know. It's, it's weird because I do think like... There's this weird sense of like... I told you the game fucking sucked. It's shutting down. Like Everyone like wants the game. They just... Apparently, just they don't like to shut down. I don't know. I got a story. I got a story. You don't want something to mm. shut down? Let's go back to MMOs.com. Uh, Tria Savior just had a server merge. So it's down to one server in uh, the West and one server in like Southeast Asia. 
Do they still, do they still have people well. playing it though? Not 1641. Really. That's not bad. Come, are you kidding? There's MRPGs on Steam with like 50 people or less. But but the thing is, those those for whatever reason must not, must cost nothing to run because they're just kind of floating forever. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a point where the uh, like, no game really has to shut down. They could just keep the servers up with zero maintenance, zero bug fixes. Like you know, is there, and there's a lot of games like that. Um, you know, what actually, I'm amazed by. Just recently, um, Cloud Nine. First of all, Cloud Nine is this old MRPG. It shut down, I think, a year or two ago, right? Over a year ago, right now, right? And then they just post on their forums that the official forums are now shutting down, like this month. I, I don't understand why the official forums were up this long, and, and, and why is it news that they're shutting down the forums now? This weird. We definitely find you know other old games are going to shut down though. Can you remember that game we played last year? Um, mm. It looked like a browser game. You got to launch it through your browser. You picked one of four characters. One of the characters, the special was you got in a raft and it caused a wave. And we would fight lots of mobs and you go through these linear levels. You guys remember this? No. Nothing at all? Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Hero Wars. Hero yeah, Wars. Hero Wars. I actually, I thought that was actually pretty decent. Does it exist? No, I shot that last year. No. It's out in Korea still. I think Nexon publishes in Korea. They said that they took it down to redevelop it, and it, it hasn't come oh, back. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. And it's weird because Closer's launched, Critical launched. We have all these games coming out that are... Uh, Soul Worker's supposed to launch eventually, but they haven't met their deadlines in forever, that are the same formula of Instance Dungeons versus the Towns. And that's the exact model that Hero Wars was, but I, I thought mm. Hero Wars was pretty decent, but... Yeah, I had fun. I, I yeah. didn't get it. You guys invited me the second time we did that game. Because you guys had already played it once. Mm -hmm. And then you guys were like, oh, this one's pretty good. I mean, you're going to like it. And I played it. I was like, what is this? This is garbage. And you just kill lots of mobs. Yeah. yeah you kill mobs. On abilities. That's okay. That's all you need. It was supposed to come back. Didn't come back. I'm still waiting for Lunia to come back. All right. Mm, keep waiting. All right, I want to fly away with Lunia one day. I'm actually... all right, here, here's, here's the real game all right, for you guys. What do you got? This is, this is the real uh, cream of the cream, boys. Oh, yeah. You, this did, is... you played have the you guys heard of Soul Calibur? Oh, we have. All right. Did you know? Did you know they were working on? Uh, Namco was working on a secret project. It's called the uh, Soul Calibur MRPG. I didn't. No, I didn't know. Please tell us more. It's oh. uh, their Chinese division was on the works on this oh, one. Stop right? telling just... me more. <laughs> All right. You just you pick your classes. You know your classes are Nightmare, Ivy, Tira, and uh, ne Necrophine, Whatever his name was, I forgot. Necrophos. I don't know. Necrophos. I think that's. And I. This is uh, obviously a legitimate product from a legitimate company. Oh, Zero Escape. Three, Three months, months in a row Twitch Prime. Mucho appreciated. So uh, clearly, this is a real game. You know, this is a licensed Soul Calibur. This is a Namco project. You know, In between working on Soul Calibur 6, they're working on uh, this bad boy. I love the, the, the Chinese flag there. Amen. It just, it's it? so bizarre, this game. It's so bizarre. They just took the formula of like these autoplay Chinese games and they replaced all the NPC quest givers with just characters from Soul Calibur, and that was it. And there's actually one like uh, you, you kill NPCs named Hogger at one point, which is, like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So I'm convinced like they have a WoW version where they rip off WoW, right? And and, and they got the assets mixed up, right? So you're killing Hogger at one point. It's, it doesn't make expert, any sense. I know I've played these browser games before, and I remember that I've seen some other WoW uh, names in them. So I think they must there must be just a list, an RNG list, and they just pick whatever name pops out. That they mm -hmm. take from from all over the place. It's this so this bizarre. looks just like every other. Yeah, they all look the same. Every single one. And they all play the same too. They all and, play and the same. And this is one of those games that you were talking about earlier, because this is one of those games where when you when you uh, go to play the game, you're in a character creation screen. If you don't pick one of the four playable classes, the game picks for you and picks a name for you and starts playing. Oh really? That's the yeah. best. These are the best. So again, if you when you if you if you like go to the character creation screen. You go uh, take a shit, make a coffee, you come back, you're a level uh, 47 Ivy named uh, something Lane. Do you it's think they so do weird. that for the same reason that Facebook, I don't know if they still do it, they would autoplay videos that you scroll through to get mm -hmm. the video count Yeah. for that yeah. quick ad. So maybe they do that for the same reason here. Make the game feel more active, right? Yep, yep, yep. And actually, at one point, you have to choose a faction, right? There's three factions in the game. You do like level like 30, which is like five Does minutes it pick in the it game. For you? It picks it for you if you leave it it's like a decision made automatically in five seconds and it just picks for you. And Amazing. It, it does all the quests, it hands them in, and everything. It, 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 the game plays itself. Oh, Fortnite is going to dominate yeah. for sure. So Maybe that, we that's end my on theory. that one. Yeah, that's my, th uh, my theory is this year, 
uh, Fortnite will end as the biggest game in the West. Bigger than League of Legends, bigger than World of Warcraft, etc. Uh, I won't bet against that. I'll actually, I would bet with you. And I, I have a few, uh, I have a few supporting documents here. Okay, so I was, um, I was uh, reading the subreddit, and some guy mentioned that he was a teacher and a, of a middle school, and he's saying all of his students, okay, during class, all they were talking about was Fortnite. And the game already makes uh, about 80 million a month. So Fortnite is number six in PC. And this is global, guys. Don't forget. So a lot of the games above Fortnite, um, like Dungeon Fighter Online, gets all its money from China. Crossfire, mm-hmm. all China. Fantasy Westward Journey Online 2, all China. And Player Unknown Battlegrounds. I know you guys, some of you might not like me saying this, but uh, 60% China. Okay, so. Yeah. So it's already like, and League, I bet, is also mostly China. But even if it's not, I think Fortnite is going to move up this list. Uh, if not number one, then number like you know top three. In fact, they 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 uh, came out a big milestone this week too. They had three point four million concurrent users, which surpasses the PUBG's numbers on Steam. So that's insane. The game is growing gangbusters, and it's not even out in China yet. You know, you can double that from the Chinese player base that's going to play when they launch. So this can easily this, this I said I agree with you. This is a game that actually has a pretty good chance of passing League. Yeah, it's one of the only games that came out in recent times that has a pretty good chance, and they're already on a huge, huge growth pattern. I haven't played it yet. Really? We should play. Really? We should play sometime. I think you'll like it. Do you have it installed? <laughs> nah. Oh my god. No. I want to end on one other funny thing, but like I was watching uh, the Overwatch League yesterday, right? And I, it was so bizarre. It was New York Excelsior. The two Overwatch teams were playing in their esports league, right, with their casters and everything. Mm-hmm. It was New York Excelsior versus London Spitfires. So t- Team New York. Versus Team London, right? I don't know if I like this already. Go ahead. And then, you know, at the end of the first round, the camera pans out. We can see all the players on New York, right? All five are Korean. And we're, we're not talking... Like, hold on. We're not talking like American Korean. I could tell from just looking at them. <laughs> they don't speak a lick of English. <laughs> all right? They were, and the thing is, their manager was Korean. And they had five backup players. They're all Korean as well, I think. All their backup... They're all Korean. And I'm like, what a, that's, that's pretty bizarre, right? And now we go to Team London. Camera backs up. All five are Korean. <laughs> and, and, and their manager is Korean. I don't think anyone speaks English either, because they they're a very like Korean Korean look. Would you see like when I watch like the Korean esports, you know, I, they look different than American Koreans, how they dress and they do their hair. So it just seems so disingenuous for the for them to be like the New York New York Excelsior team versus the London Spitfire team when both teams are Koreans. Does just Korea so silly. does Korea actually have the competitive edge over, yes. over the world in Overwatch? Yes, they're they're the best Overwatch players. I, yeah, really. They're they have, they're natural born gamers, you know. Just, their stats, their their racial bonuses for Overwatch are through the roof. But does it does it seem weird though? Like, I think you, I think hmm. esports uh, is going to go through the same thing like regular sports went through. So what 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 uh, Overwatch did was they sold licenses by city, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think they're going to make a rule that like sixty percent of players have to be, be from that city because that's, that's what uh, soccer does. Because I remember in, in Turkey, there's like the Turkish national team, right? Is like there's a bunch of black guys on the team. And uh, because they pay them because they're better players than the Turks. But there's some kind of rule now that like X percent of players have to be from your actual country. Really? Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, it makes sense as far as um, like when you see the German soccer team in the World Cup, there's German. But there's also people from all over the world, right? Yeah. yeah. So then I guess in that way, uh, you diversify your team. And it's funny because there's obviously there's a lot of unscrupulous countries out there like Turkey. So what Turkey did is some some, black, some African guys started playing for Turkish team and they were over their quota of like foreigners, right? So they literally just gave them a passport. They just they printed a Turkish passport and citizenship and gave it what? to them. So he became a Turkish citizen. <laughs> Around it. So now he so now he doesn't count for the quota. <laughs> that, it, it's so because like, well, you see that in the World Cup, like you said, once in a while, right? Some like black guy playing for the Turkish team and the Turks aren't black, right? Which, what, but that's fine because you see. But like when you see the whole team, it is kind of uh, why the. If it's, they were called New York and London, that's fine. There's no problem if you were just the Spitfires or the Excelsiors. But when you when you assign a geographical area to a team, it just seems weird to have. Maybe uh, they're all from New York, and you're just okay. judging. Well, also, Look, you should specify that we, you wouldn't mind if they were Koreans from New York City. Yeah, of course. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, okay. yes. If they're if they if, they're Amer- if they live there, that's fine. That, that, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. America is supposed to be this, you know, uh, diverse place, and there are a lot of Koreans there, but. I, I didn't get the vibe that these guys. It just seemed like they were. They didn't strike. They weren't wearing. They weren't wearing their Yankee hats. So you. They weren't wearing. They weren't carrying the American flags. <laughs> like, so look at this team. Look at this. The, I linked. I linked you the London team. I'm gonna link you the New York team. All right. Like, and they have ten players in the team because they have five backups, right? They're all Korean. 
There's there's no there's no yeah, white guys there. You know what? You're right. These guys look very very uh, Korean Korean. <laughs> Gumball, what do you think? I haven't seen yet. Hold on. Let me look at the New York one as well. There is. Oh, I see. Oh, these guys, the New York ones are even more Korean. Look at the New York ones. And it's like, look. And it's like, they have all these backup players at Manners, and there's no, they're all Korean. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I yield that the Koreans are way better at, this, at the game, and it's optimal play to have all Koreans on your team. Like, I get that. But just don't call them New York and London when it's just. Yeah. Yeah. This is what happens when you don't take these guys uh, look pure, like, like, straight, like st straight from Gangnam, Korea. All right. Hey, like, Gangnam? There's only one city. It's called, it's called Seoul. All right. All right. Straight from Seoul. Here's how you tell if they're. American Koreans or Korean Koreans? Ready? The da they have a dash in their name. They're they're Korean Koreans. Oh yeah, that's the, I'm making that up, but it, it sounds it sounds right to me. Sounds racist. <laughs> I clicked into one of their profile, their Twitter pages, and he's got like one tweet that's in Korean. So there, he's Korean Korean. Uh, I, I, it just struck me as weird. I watched the game anyway, right? Because well, how was the game? Yeah, I'm gonna ask. How was the game? Overwatch is a very weird game to spectate. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, and I play Overwatch, and it just seems so hard to follow. So I don't know if it's a really good esport. I think if but you I watch that anyway. intuitively know what's going on and you're a player, uh, yeah. it bodes poorly for the state of the Yeah, e I, I can't tell who's winning like sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I'm just really bad at Overwatch. I don't know. No, I think what makes like I don't play League or Dota 2, but if I see esports, I, I kinda know what's going on. <laughs> I can tell like oh that guy got killed or whatever. <laughs> Sorry, Rage Gamer just said, let's cut the shit. Um, uh, when can we get emos.com brain pills? <laughs> we got to do segments like Alex oh, Jones. God. Just to stop the podcast in the middle be like, all right, you got to get your pills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. These brain pills and a fucking 10,000 ELO now. All right? I don't, only headshots. Does he do that? Alex Jones will stop oh, his show for oh an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe this is the post-game thing, but like, this, I was, I, I was uh, driving my cousins off at the airport and Alex Jones was on the radio and I'm I'm like, all right, it's pretty fun. And I'm hearing these brain pills advertised. Oh, man, it's it's really interesting. I'll see if we can find the video later. All right. Well, it's we are commercial. running out of time. Uh, so we did cover this Overwatch racist stuff before we finish. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You're going to have some good comments this week. Uh, we're we're going to be called racist now, I bet. Watch. But well, you're going to get called it now just for mentioning it. I it's, know. It's, it's a vicious cycle. It's just, yeah. yeah. Well, with that all stuff, I'm saying is we got to let some white people play Overwatch, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, all right, let's go, let's go. Okay, thanks for watching, Later. guys. Uh, we're going to hang out with you guys in the post game, but if you're watching on YouTube, uh, fair as well. Buy the brain pills! Buy the brain pills! <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we're going to have a whole line of supplements. All right, take care. Mm -hmm.